that meter. So you brought Tootie up to Lake Superior? Yes, I did. Fishing has been marginal. Did you catch any this morning? Nothing this morning. Uh, one a couple days ago, and I cooked them right out on the water. A little bacon and eggs uh, with some potatoes. And it was really good. Yep. Oh, is that what it mattered? Uh, you girl? Uh, uh, nice dog. I like dogs. Well, howdy guys and gals, Backwaters and Backroads here, obviously. We finally caught up with Harold Peterson, and that's an S-E-N, by the way, Danish. He built the Tootie boat. He not only bought this and refurbished it, he actually built it from the ground up. I've known him, we've known each other for a couple of years. He's actually a fellow Uper, and he's got connections to Ontonaugat even here. He's got relatives and such. And we're both just kind of busy. We go on motorcycle rides once in a while and this and that, but this is really the first time I've been able to get on the boat and and ask him to tell us all about it so why don't i just stop yapping turn the phone around and ask him some questions stay tuned hi harold how are you doing Brett? <laughs> thanks for having me on the tootie boat well it's good to see you got back from delivering those uh solar panels it's murder people don't think i work much but when i do it's uh i just drove four thousand miles in the past week oh wow that uh that toyota pickup of yours is really getting a workout in other yeah words. 352,000 miles and counting. Wow. That's a long <laughs> and I also carry them in cars too, which has backfired on me a couple times. But enough about me. Tell us about the Tootie boat. Well, uh, a friend of mine and I, we went to uh, Florida, Florida Keys, and uh, we were about to go home. And we went down this side road on the way to the airport, and Elmer Eckhart was his name. And we seen this boat along the side of the road looked a lot like this one. And we were arguing with one another whether or not who was going to get to buy it if it happened to be for sale. Had a big hole in the side of it from some storm damage. And uh, we did find a guy, but it wasn't for sale. So when I got home, I said, geez, I says, I, I want a boat like that, a little trawler. And... Uh, I started looking up the prices and stuff on them, and most of them were up around $125,000, and I didn't have $125,000, so uh, people ask me, they say, well, what possesses you to build your own boat? And I says, not having enough money to buy one, so. <laughs> but you got the skills. <laughs> well, yeah, I've always been pretty handy as far as uh, building things, so uh, I bought the plans from Ken Hankinson. I don't think he's in business anymore, but uh, I still got the plans. I, I've thought about building another one, but I've got to wear this one out first. And it's, let me see, that was uh, 16 years ago when I built this. So uh, 16 years and about 16 to 18,000 miles on the water. It's uh, been up and down the Mississippi River and uh, two trips to the Knoxville, uh, Tennessee, on the Tennessee River, end to end. Um, taking it just about everywhere and had a lot of fun uh, with this. Uh, I don't know if everybody should try to build one or not. Um, you, you need a lot of time. It took me about, I guess, 11 months to build this, but that was morning day and night yeah i remember you telling me it would have taken you a lot longer if you weren't retired or had to work a job and, right yeah. um and you have to have uh you have to have a place some materials uh, i've got my own little sawmill and i i cut my own lumber for building it other than most of it is plywood but all the frames and all of that i cut myself wow that makes it extra special in my opinion well it uh The labor of love. My wife said, uh, you, I'd be sitting in uh, in the chair, and she says, what are you doing? And I says, I'm building. And uh, she says, how can you build it when you're sitting in a chair? I says, well, I says, I, as soon as I think of something, I'll be heading out there. I said, That's easily half of it, and it's so underappreciated, all, yeah. this, all the thinking about it. <laughs> but it, um, it doesn't go very fast. Uh, I cruise between 8 and 10 miles an hour. And what is it powered by? Uh, this is a 60 horse Bigfoot Mercury. Uh, 
after it was out of warranty, I painted it my own colors to match the boat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and my the name of it, Tootie, was from my uh, farting granddaughter. <laughs> and she was kind of proud of that every once in a while. So that's what we named the boat. She got to name Grandpa's boat. Yeah, Tootie. That's the, uh, the, the tootie boat. Yeah. <laughs> so just to make sure we do cover it all in one spot, can you just give us the basic specs of it? Uh, this was made in two different versions. It had a 21, a 25, and then you could stretch it to 28, and I stretched it. Oh, so it's 28 feet? Uh, 28, but then I put the uh, engine box on the back, and the, so it ended up being 30 feet from one end to the other. So the plans had it as a conventional transom or an inboard or both or either or? or? Three different ones. Originally I was going to make it an inboard, but the Yanmar diesel that I was looking at in all the running gear ended up being uh, like $18,000. And I called up Ken Hankinson, the designer of the boat, and uh, he said, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. He says, before but he says mercury makes a uh, four stroke 60 horse bigfoot and he says i built that boat to handle 60 horsepower so he said uh, he says if you can he says i would recommend putting an outboard on it he said you'll like it a lot better than the diesel and he was right about that oh i agree yeah. plus you can kick it up and it even becomes more shallow draft Absolutely. I can go into about 18 inches of water with this. So, yeah, it's, I've done that quite a few times. Actually, the, the front of the boat will hit before the back. <laughs> so if you're, you're feeling your way into a river <laughs> mouth, I see you do that. Oh, I've done it plenty of times. <laughs> and it, I always find out what my boats can do. <laughs> when you feel the front, if you feel the front hitting, yeah, you're getting too shallow. So. Yeah. Have you ever had to uh, adopt my motto of when in doubt, walk it out? Uh, yes, I have. I've been uh, one night uh, with my wife and granddaughters along. We got blown up into these bull rushes, and uh, uh, it must have been 45 mile an hour winds and whatnot. But I just left it there for the night. And then in the morning, I had to walk it out. Yeah, yeah outboards are make things so much easier. And uh, the extended transom, did you? Is that kind of your own? Um, idea on the plans? Uh, not necessarily. I wanted that. I, I got a 25 inch transom and uh, I thought for big water and following seas and stuff like that to keep you from getting swamped. Mm -hmm. And uh, this work around here was not in the plan. Uh, I decided I wanted to be able to sit on it like this and uh, it really works good for that. Yeah. So. No, this is a beautiful boat. While you're up, maybe we could just do a little tour. I could follow sure. you around. Sure. Uh, why don't you head in there first, or you want me in there first? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. This uh, this boat is uh, very livable. It has um, hot and cold running water. I steal hot water from the outboard motor and I run it through a hot water heater with a heat exchanger. And uh, that surprises a lot of people. I can stand on the back of this boat and take a shower forever. You from, never run out of hot water. Is it come from the telltale? I uh, tapped into the side of the engine and uh, you know just like most cars the, the heaters and whatnot work off from uh, uh, the engine. And uh, when I first got this engine, I was looking and I said, oh, I said, I wonder what that plug is on top of the, the uh, engine. So I disconnected it or unplugged it and lots of hot water comes out of it. So I use it. Um, That's thinking outside the box. Oh yeah, well, and uh, people from Mercury probably wouldn't have cared for that idea, but, <laughs> but it really worked well and it's never caused a problem. As a matter of fact, it, it actually makes too hot of water for taking a shower. It mm. comes out 140 degrees. Oh. So I made another little tap on it from a cold spot that I can introduce cold water oh. into that. So you can mix yeah. like a shower. Yep. Uh, just while I'm standing here, Harold, maybe you could just explain to me the, the galley like you were talking about? Uh, propane stove. I uh, carry a 20 pound bottle outside. Um, 
lots of storage. Um, refrigerator here is a uh, right from the Home Depot, 110 volt. I have a um, what did they call it? power power inverter? It changes 12 volt to 110. I saw you had a generator on the back. The the Super Dynamo is a lawnmower engine with a uh, car alternator hooked up inside <laughs> that box, and it'll put out about 45 amps. Wow. You didn't even have to buy a generator. You just kind of made your own. I made my own. I do have a generator at home, but this, this does uh, a really good job. If I sit around and I get the batteries way down low, and uh, two tanks of gas in the lawnmower engine, then she'll bring her up to about 90%. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is so cool. And then you got this it turns into like a guest bed? Yeah, this turns into a bed. The, the front up here basically has... About a size of a king size. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that. Sure. A lot of junk piled in there right now, I guess, but I sleep on the right side. Cuddies are so nice. Yep. That's why I like my Vagabond. Well, it's nice and uh, I can open up the hatch cover and then uh, uh, it's screen. So if that's open and there's a breeze at all, it'll come right through there. Now I got the O2 cool fan. My wife always said, uh, what do you mean O2 cool fan? I says on the bottom of it says O2 cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a real lifesaver. Oh, hey, I got to show you these, the dental chairs for driving. See, you pull these up like this here. And then you sit on the seat and you don't steer with your hands necessarily, you steer with your feet. <laughs> like st stirrups or what well, would they call that? Whatever, <laughs> I, I, I don't, unless I get close quarters, I said where I'm sitting when I'm driving. Yeah. And that one's got one too. You put them up there. That is so cool. I made my own ship's wheel. You made the wheel. I made the wheel. So guys, this should tell you the skill level that Harold has. Yeah. Um, that's Roy. Roy in Canada can do something like that too. There's very few people that are capable of that level. Well, I, I did copy one a little bit from somebody else's, but uh, basically I made it. Everything would. I, there again, I don't know if I recommend everybody try it because if you got a full-time job, uh, you may not have a full-time wife when you get done or the job. <laughs> I'll take the boat over the wife. That's yeah. just me, though. There you go. Well, <laughs> so you have slider doors on both sides, kind of like a Rossboro. Yeah. The door latch is here. Wood, of course. And then the pins push it out. And then to lock them, you pull the pin out here and you put it in the next hole and then it locks it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to have slider doors in the front and back of mine because they the most space efficient. Works pretty good. Yeah, he has one on this side too, guys. Yep. Good for docking. People love that feature on a Rossboro. Well, I've had it out in some uh, pretty wicked storms a couple of times. One of them just about five miles from here, about 80 mile an hour wind and thunderstorm got me. And so people ask me, they say, will it handle rough water? And I say, yes, it will, because the wind just about tipped me over. <laughs> the wind itself just about did. Well, I mean, so your your helm, your cabin up here is elevated, which I can already tell is, is an advantage in so many ways. I mean, you're really far off the water. Kind of reminds me of a Nomad, except probably even more so. There's 50 gallons of water under your feet. Is that function Drinking somewhat water. of a ballast also? No, well, it, it, it does. Uh, I evened it out. I have the fuel tanks a little bit forward, just in back of that wall, and then, then this, so it keeps it kind of flattened out. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, wide open, when I got done building it, it would go 19 miles an hour, wow. which is amazing. Yeah. 60 horsepower. Absolutely. But then I keep loading stuff in it, and it keeps getting heavier, <laughs> so we're down to about 50. So. What is it way not on the trailer? Uh, well, I, I'm about 5,800 pounds. <clears throat> that's the boat and motor and well, everything, everything ready to go. That, that's water, everything. It's, it's a very light boat. Uh, 
the the hull is made of half inch plywood marine plywood and the sides are three eighths uh so it's 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 lightly built and then you laid fiberglass over that uh fiberglass cloth uh used about 22 gallons of epoxy mm -hmm. and different types of uh, fillers and hardeners and stuff like that mm -hmm. but uh, uh, came it's... out really well I haven't poked a hole in it yet <laughs> why don't you tell us what you got here on your helm uh, well, of course ship to shore and this is uh, I call it the beer drinking uh, camera here that <laughs> aims out the back so you can Just see put a, the put a can of beer in, in front of it or something. Law, law enforcement coming behind you if you're, if you're tipping one I mean how much trouble can you cause going oh, that, that's only now. theoretical you would never do that oh, and I, no, I never no. do that either no. then you have uh, what is this um, combination fish finder GPS and I have a chip in there that covers all of the Great Lakes and uh, all of the all the lakes. It, it, this will go. You can take off from here and go all the way to New Orleans, and all of the charts are in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Yep, and then you got a closet. Actually, two closets. Yeah. Another sink. Yep. And a bunch of storage underneath the cuddy. You got a lot of that room under the nose there, eh? Oh yeah. There's, there's lots of place to store stuff. Um, it. This would be your view. Yeah, you're really off the water. It's nice. Oh, it is. It it. Um, some people get seasick in it, though. You get rocking back and forth, and a lot of the stuff here I got from that uh, Carver boat. The guy told me it was a junker. And uh, he says you for a hundred dollars. He says you can take anything off from it you want. I bet you got your hundred bucks worth. I came out of there with coffee cans full of brass screws, and uh, the the spotlight on the front, the sinks, all of the faucets, the the running lights, and all of that. They all came from that boat. Mm -hmm. So anything that was, I even had railings and stuff, but I never put them on to. Uh, to anchor and stuff, you can stand on the bunk up here in the front through that hatch hole and without getting thrown off. Do you uh, did you make your own dinghy? I did. And I, you, I don't have it with me. Yeah. Where does it ride when you normally have it? Uh, on that bunk right there in back. And I for fishing and stuff, I don't usually right there those that black thing sticking up. Uh, and then I made a um, a little crane. Oh goes on there and you can pick it up off the side and then flop it yeah. over on that's the, uh, manual or it's manual that's not necessarily for the faint of heart to get <laughs> up there and do that but it, it does work yeah the dinghy weighs about 100 pounds uh, my windows here these open That one does the same thing, and then we have uh, we have scooper windows on it when it's when it's hot. Yeah, Did you and get those. We off were the... talking about going to the Bahamas. These would be invaluable. Yeah, they're like little wing windows that you used to see in a car. Yeah, you know? it just scoops the air right in here. Yeah. With those open and that and that front hatch, uh, my son and I went down the Mississippi River. We got down by Louisiana. It was a hundred degrees outside. Unfortunately, there was a little breeze, but we were going with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we got fans, and I, I do have an air conditioner that I can put in one of the windows. Did those windows come off the carver? No, yep. I bought these windows, and then these I got from uh, St. George Glass in Iron Mountain. Had them cut them to fit. They've been getting some water in between the panes. Mm. They got uh, that's that shatterproof glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really cool boat. Well, there's a lot of boats can't come in and out of here. Right. Which works in our favor. Yes. Yeah, like I would... 
Did I tell you about the guy that w was talking to me? He wanted to uh, put a dock up there. He says, well, maybe we should put a dock up there for you. I said, no, 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 no. I said, that wouldn't be a good idea at all. I said, I wouldn't come here no more. <laughs> That's why I like Rebel Ports. You hear me yeah. talking about them. I want a boat where I can get into places that leaves most everybody else behind. Right. And it gets them all, there's one spot here, I think it'll say 2.6. Harold's going to show us how he steers with his feet. That's it. Yeah, this, this, this works pretty darn good. <laughs> and everybody gets uh, the, the, the dental chairs here. I thought about that quite a while, making designing these Well, chairs. the fact you can kick them out with your feet like that, yeah. you don't even need to... And then it, once you get good at it, see so you pull the cord here, and you take your heel and you walk. Genius. I don't know about genius, but it's so simple it does work. <laughs> I go all day long, I never touch the steering wheel with my hands. Usually, I, I don't know if the Indians been here in the last season to make them mad at me or nothing, but uh, some people really don't. This is the beer drinking camera here. <coughs> Going through Portage Canal, you know, they sneak up behind you. Yeah. Well, I turn the camera on, see? And then, when I'm looking out the front, see? There. See, you can see them coming up behind you. So you, you can keep your beer back, you know. Yep. So they and they just pass and wave. I mean, how, how much damage can you do going seven, eight miles an hour? Not much, except uh, fund their retirement. Yeah. yeah. I need to get a, a camera for the barge. Well, I don't know. It's, it's more of a novelty thing, to be quite honest. But I don't I don't have my beer in this on my leg right here when they come up because... They will. They will pinch you. Yeah, they like to sneak up on you. I was fishing those flats yeah. once, and they had, had the DNR come out, you know, because it's right along the fish fish refuge yeah. there. And they rolled up right along before I even saw them coming. Oh, they're yeah, good they're, at it. They try to sneak up on you. Well, this here, they can't come right up behind you where you can't see them. And then they'll pull right up to the door. They ever had them come aboard? Yes, I have. Yeah. Me, me too. Yeah, they, they want to come and inspect. I think I'm legal right now. Which is not always the case. <laughs> there you go. Here you go. Where's my beer? I need a beer. <laughs> so guys, we are coming back into the big iron here. And um, Harold knows, you know, the, the line to follow to not hit anything. It's both sides, I think, does, does have some hazards. You can see that right there. Yeah, you know... You gotta know where you're going a little bit. Now this wind is uh, working against us. Well, well, me. <laughs> People stopping and looking. <laughs> I'm used to that. Oh yeah, yeah. They. Oh, here comes a big boat in there. But ain't a big boat. Not in the. Not in Lake Superior. <laughs> Oh hi, my name is Wavy Gravy, star of the channel. If you like these nosy beagle interviews, maybe you could send me some treats. Thanks. So this is Harold's um, version of my nemesis, the trestle on the Ontonagon. Yeah. He can get under it if he pulls down some poles and... Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. He didn't even tell me about that. So you just left it in reverse. 
And what was that? You didn't even tell me about that. What is that? What's that? What that thing you just put to the bridge? Oh, well, that's that's the beer, the the, the bridge snagger. <laughs> I mean, dumb question, but what's the purpose of that? That's my anchor. You don't even have to throw an anchor. Oh, that just leaves tension. That is the anchor. It like gives tension when you go and tie yeah. the shore. Okay. And you come here enough that that was worth it to kind of make something like I that. I made that, that piece of wood that I hook onto that beam. One guy says, well, what is the county going to say about that? I said, well, I said, I don't think I had as much chance of me pulling that bridge over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we got the rope stretched out. You could probably use that in the fire steel too. That would work. A lot of bridges. Yeah. You might want to check that design out. Yeah, I'll talk to more, you more about that. That is uh Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna get her aimed over there. This is kind of your home port. This is your this is a true rebel port for you. I like it here. I'm learning a thing or two here, Harold. Well, I thought I was a rebel. Okay, now I gotta go back to the front. up the one in the back, ties it off on the front. You're an inspiration, Harold. Makes me it worked, want to, didn't it? I'm going to keep doing this until I fall over. Well, I haven't fallen off yet, but in close a couple <laughs> times. Two more cans of beer. <laughs> Let's work on that. Okay. <laughs> So, I should start asking everyone that I interview, or actually the Beagle interviews, this, but we'll just start with you, okay? You know, you're in your 70s now. You've had a lot of adventures. You've done a lot of stuff. You've built stuff. You're, you know, you've, you've lived a full life. So, if I asked you, would you do it all over again the same way, or what would be the changes? You know, is that even a question that, that you can answer? What, what's your thoughts on that? But my thoughts are most people give their life to somebody else. They work their entire life, and they uh, they don't they don't realize that when you get past 65 years old, they got all these plans about what they thought they were going to do for their whole life, but it's very unlikely that they'll do that. And uh, if you get good at doing this kind of stuff before you get old you can probably keep doing it some because you learned all of the tricks and the labor saving devices right and not only that it keeps you uh in some kind of i mean i'm no physical specimen by no stretch of the imagination but uh well, you seem I, like do you're thing, I do things i keep crawling around and, and uh, if you just you want to lose up, your balance you just crawl in the front of the boat and set up <laughs> that's right <laughs> Yeah, and I even had a couple of cans and, in here before. You might, I, I, I have to go back and look at the footage. You might have had one in your hand when you were yeah, doing well, it. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it, and that is absolutely mm -hmm. true. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so to keep doing it in your old age, you kind of want to start early so you can start getting the practice yeah. and. And don't listen to the people that tell you you can't. 
because there's, I can't tell you how many people that are my age say, oh, you're too old to get up on earth. You're too old to be doing that by yourself. I say, well, and they can't do it. And some of them are in the grave. Yeah. And so as long as you feel you can, you keep trying to do it. Yeah. And use it, I, you know, use it, use it or lose it is a really wise. That's true. Yeah. That is true. You know, I, uh, similar to that, Harold, is uh, people, you know, often said to me, and I've even said it to myself, it's kind of like, well, you know, you want to, you know, you always want to do that stuff by yourself. Why do you do stuff by yourself all the time? My answer to that, in a nutshell, is if I don't do it by myself, I won't do it. I can't, I, I stopped waiting for someone else to do it with me. They, they, they don't do it. They don't do it. And, and if you're waiting for somebody else all the time, that's all you're going to be doing is waiting. And I don't wait. I, I, if I have a problem, I change my mind a lot. And uh, uh, I disappoint myself sometimes with that. But uh, You mean like make what, plans for an adventure and then you change your mind on it? Yeah. Like last year I took that trip uh, out west on my motorcycle and people thought I was crazy. That was 6,000 miles. And uh, um, I hadn't seen all of the national parks and stuff. My wife is not a tourist. She likes traveling in a car, but she don't like pulling into national parks. So I took off on the bike and went to all of them by myself. And uh, I don't have anybody to tell me, no, we ain't going to do this. And you got it, can't do that. Whatever I can do, I do. You know, so mm -hmm. that's my philosophy. You don't. You don't let people talk you out of doing stuff. Life is a drop in the bucket of time. Mm -hmm. It goes so quick. I've done a lot of different things in my life. Uh, between, uh, i got to give you a piece of that. Like my uh, venison sausage here. You have some on the boat? I do. I, oh, I, let's I, have some right now. Uh, I nibble away at it and, uh, yeah. Maybe. I think I need one more beer. Me too. I didn't know if you drank beer. Wait, but I wasn't giving that to you. <laughs> you need another piece? I was, yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> I guess you got her treat. Sometimes it can be tricky to launch these bigger pocket trawlers into small rivers like the Big Iron here. The lake level's up quite a bit this year, so it's not as much of a problem as it's been in the past, but uh, I'll just follow along with Harold here, and, you know, he'll, he's good at it. We maybe we'll learn something. So, Harold, you're taking your boat across the river? Yeah. You're going to load her up. I'm going to get my, uh, my ropes and stuff all with me, because I don't come back here this time. His clever hook that goes to the bottom of the bridge. I'll try to get a better picture of that for you guys. Harold, the boat goes that way. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I go down this way and come up with it and then get it on there a lot easier. I uh, drove across the river. Looks like Harold's having a hard time loading up here, so maybe I can be useful.
right, we grabbed her, guys. Not bad for 74 years old, sir. Uh, well, You're an inspiration. Well, I try. <laughs> Sometimes I gotta go swimming. <laughs> Me. <laughs> You were exactly zero help, as usual. Harold's got a homemade transom saver. Let's see how he does this. Back of the trailer, comes up and look at that. Yeah. Good idea. So it doesn't bounce up and down the way right. down the road. Saves your transom. I see those beers you left in the fridge there last night. I drank them. <laughs>